staring you in the face is Whiting's model of information processing and what a beauty it is. Let's see if we can break this down and make it proper simple. Now, I want to start with some, some terminology. The first bit of terminology I'm going to give you is that of the environment. Now, that is not a new word to you, obviously. Don't forget that dastardly N in the middle before the M. But the environment in this context is all the white stuff around the outside of this model. It's everything. And I want to stress to you that the, the environment contains the display. Now I'm going to come on to define the display in a second, but I want you to think about the term environment as everything, everything both outside and within the performer. Okay, that's what we are talking about. Now the display is a very sort of similar notion, and you see that's where our image comes into play now. Here's our display down here. Our display, what this means is it's all, and I'm going to underline that word, the sensory information, the sensory information surrounding a performer. So these are things like sounds. Uh, these are things like uh, I guess surrounding in there, <laughs> surrounding the performer. These are things like uh, that it's light that can obviously in a moment be absorbed by the eye and interpreted. Uh, it's vision once we've got an eye involved, obviously, which we'll come to now. It's uh, the feeling of movements. It, it's it's the it's the contact between two players in a rugby match. It's all of that, but it's also and within the performer. So this display also includes the stuff, the, the sort of the kinesthetic feel, the proprioception that the performer themselves is sensing. So this display ultimately is all the sensory information. That's the point we're trying to get at. And of course, how is that sensory information picked up? It is picked up through sensory organs. Okay, sensory organs. Now, obviously, you're seeing sensory organs here as receptor systems. So let me write that in. These are sensory organs. Now, I also want to stress to you that each of these lines here, of course, the idea there's lots of them there, it's saying there's lots of this information from the display. But the sensory or organs are your ears, they are your eyes, they are, let's say, your proprioceptors, your muscle spindles, your Golgi tendon organs within the tendons, proprioceptors. And of course, it's these vehicles, these um, these vessels that are actually absorbing this information, this sensory information from the display. Without that, we have no interaction with the outside or internal world, right? Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. We take our, our eyes, our ears, our proprioceptors, they absorb all of that information. So we're talking about a huge quantity of info there. So of course, we need some kind of perceptual system. Now, you'll see why in a second. And you see on the diagram there the, 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 the perceptual system. And what we're talking about here, or mechanism I really should say, is this is the process of selective attention. So later in our studies, that's neat, later in our studies we're going to be talking about things such as uh, stimuli and how aroused we are in our sports psychology course, for example. This is the notion in the perceptual mechanism of filtering in and out. We filter, we filter in we filter out. So of course, we may well fit, filter in and attend to the flight of the ball, the position of our opponent, the music in which I'm following in my choreography. These are critical aspects of my performance, but I'm filtering out anything which is considered to be irrelevant stimuli. So we filter in relevant, we filter out irrelevant. Now the other point I want to sort of link to this, let me make sure I'm on the right colour, is this also, this also includes what we call the DCR process. Now, within perception, we are detecting, comparing, and recognizing this information that's coming in via our receptor systems. So because we are actually comparing it now to other information we've experienced before, we can now start actually making interpretations of what this is and what needs to be done. So within our perceptual mechanisms, we want to get decision making. So I want to be crystal clear here. Let's consider, I don't know, let's say a cricketer who is about to feel the ball that has not bounced it. In other words, going to try and catch it. This perceptual mechanism here, or the perceptual mechanisms, this is where, not where they sense the ball coming towards them, but where they recognise this means a ball is coming towards me at this speed, at this height, at this trajectory. It hasn't bounced yet, or it's got, it, it might bounce in front of me, so I've got to move forward. It might bounce behind me, so I've got to move backwards. The, the, the boundary rope is there, so I mustn't step there. They are making decisions based on that information. Now, notice they're also removing lots of sensory information, and they're saying, that's filtered out. It's irrelevant to me, okay? Now, we can't move based on a decision. That's where our translatory mechanism comes in. So let me write this down here. Translatory. 
So when we talk about translatory, this is different now. This is where decisions made in our perceptual system, decisions are converted. Okay, they are converted and they're converted into a command. In other words, we take the decision, I'm going to move my hand up to the right and open my fingers to receive the ball outstretched. That's the command we're going to send via the nervous system to the muscular system to produce that movement. And of course, we have to translate that into neural connection. In other words, nerve impulses. Okay, so that's what we mean by the translatory mechanism. Now, the effector mechanism, let me choose a different color, the effector, and you can see that up here, look. The effector me mechanism, let me see if I can find myself some space. The effector, and you've probably studied effector mechanisms in biology, I would imagine, but your effector mechanism here, we are talking about the neural stimulation. In other words, the nerval, <laughs> the nerval, the nerve impulses to the muscle. Neural stimulation of the muscles via the CNS, the central nervous system. But of course, in order then to move, we've got the muscular system. And we should also consider this, by the way, the muscular system, this is also what we call output. It is muscle contractions. I, the example I gave was the hand or the, maybe the, uh, the arm abducting at the shoulder, uh, uh, elbow extension and the flexion of the fingers or the extension of the fingers to make sure that the uh, catch is possible. So it's muscle, muscle contractions, but it's also what we'd call timing sequencing because those things have to also be done in the right order right so that's implemented by the muscular system and that produces our, our output data okay our output data because the output is movement and then finally folks we get and of course you see it here there's our output and our muscular system we get it here now this is what we call our feedback data <laughs> our feedback data and of course feedback in this sense we get different types of feedback but i'm going to remind you or maybe you haven't studied this yet, that you get intrinsic feedback. What, did it feel correct? Did the ball land comfortably in the hand? Did I feel balanced? Did I fall over? These are intrinsic senses potentially, but we also get extrinsic, okay? Did the umpire give the decision as caught out and the next batter has to come in, for example? This could be applause for a great catch. This could be one's teammates running towards you to say, great catch, whatever it happens to be. This is an extrinsic feedback mechanism. And of course, the other point to make is that this is continuous because especially with sort of serial and continuous skills, we get that sort of repetition of movement, right? So of course, it's not just happening once at catching cricket. It's kind of one off it to an extent, isn't it? It's quite discreet. Um, but here, of course, that could be continuous. One last thing on my terribly scribbled um, uh, experience here. I want to make sure you realize as well that from here to here, we could actually refer to that as response time. Okay, so however long that takes, is actually how long it takes to react to something, okay? So bear in mind, that would be response time, you know, sensing the information, and then ultimately, um, how long it takes to respond to that information. I hope that's helpful, cheers.